<laughs> you know, like Shakespeare said, the world is a stage and the people are its actors. In a way, we are the audience and we are the performers on the stage of life. And, you know, it's just, there isn't anything you can think of that can't happen. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. Uh, you know, and it's like that. So, to me, I think it's just another beautiful part of the, the play. You know, it's like God makes up this, this incredible play and we all just act out the parts. George Harrison, vous étiez le, le plus jeune des, des Beatles, vous étiez le plus calme aussi. Est-ce que vous aviez déjà à l'époque le, le sentiment de l'éphémère, de la relativité Well, I, sp I don't know, I suppose so. When I was, you know, when I was a kid, I used to like to go, you know, just in the, in the countryside. I've always liked nature, you know, the woods or the ocean or, you know, gardens and natural things. Now, Even now, yes, but the, the, with the Beatles, I, you know, I had some of the biggest egos known to mankind, you know, and I wasn't about to try to upstage them. You know, I, I, I preferred to be the quiet one at the time because I could just watch them doing all the, you know, it was, it was just the position. It's like a football team, you know, you have the center forward and right wing and you know maybe I was the goalkeeper or some no Ringo was the goalie I was you know center half Before you know you... like the position in a team that's what it was it was a structure from you know the different personalities and also astrologically if you put the four a astrologically together it became some big thing and we just played the parts that were written in the script Au fond, est-ce que vous avez jamais aimé la gloire? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for some time. You know, when we were young and it first happened, first started, it was great because it meant that you could get out of, you know, out of the, you know, I didn't have any work. I had no job. I had no qualifications. If, if I'd have not been a musician, then I wouldn't, you know, I had no ambition to be, you know, a, a, an aeroplane pilot or, you know, or anything. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to play the guitar. And that was, you know, lucky that I got out of Liverpool like that. Au fond, George, votre référence majeure à, à la philosophie indienne, c'est uh, all things must pass. Well, I mean, doesn't have any Indian music or anything on it, you know. I mean, on some earlier records with the Beatles, I had tamburas or sitar and tabla and various Indian sounds, but this album, I don't believe no, has... It's only All Things Must Pass, it's only the title. The title yeah. is, is, is a... Is it your, your motto? Well, that's, it's not my motto, it's what exists. Or, you know, they say, past has gone, thou canst not that recall. Future is not, may not be at all. Present is, you know, the only thing that exists is really the now. Just think we're on television forever. Est-ce qu'il est possible de trouver de la force dans cette phrase, au fond, tout doit passer, tout est éphémère that is, all things must pass just shows the nature of the physical world. Everything is changing all the time. We get born and we die. But we are in this body and we go through from birth to death. We stay the same. The soul is the same, but the body is changing. And like that, you know, it's the nature of, it's called duality and it just keeps changing, but everything passes except the essence of that, which is our soul. Well, it's, I mean, that's an unfortunate thing because musically, I'm not really that good. I'm nowhere near on the, you know, any level that's worth talking much about musically. What I can do is like somebody who can make a cake 
I can mix little things together and shove a few apples in it and put some icing on the top and make something that is quite nice. But if you take it all apart, you know, I don't believe I have great musical ability or great lyrical ability. And I have a bigger problem than that is because of my influence from Indian music and the whole spiritual thing is that I don't see the point to writing most songs. Like most people will write, I could write hundreds of songs, you know, hey baby, what you gonna do? You know, I could churn them out, but I don't want to. If I'm gonna say something, I'd like it to have some kind of importance, some value so that you know, in 20 years' time, it's still, it's not just some dumb song that made, you know, some royalties. I mean, the royalties are nice, but it would be good to be able to have something a little deeper. And, and so, you know, it's very difficult how, that's why the chants of India is much better, because it's all there in Sanskrit. You just say the Sanskrit, and they're all mantras, and they're all prayers, and they all have a spiritual connection it's much easier than trying to write in English some incredible philosophy or something that has a value. Ravi, Ravi Shankar, George Harrison a dit de vous que vous étiez le, le parrain de la world music. Est-ce que vous avez le sentiment d'avoir été un précurseur dans les années 60 de la world music lorsque vous participiez au grand festival pop? Well, it just happened, you know. Uh, all I wanted to do because of my childhood experience uh, about eight years from 10 to 18 in the West uh, was uh, knowing the Western mind and listening to a lot of Western music, classical, jazz, all sort of music in those days. So after I met this great man, Baba Aladdin, who became my guru, I went to him and for years and years in the old fashioned way I had my completely surrendering myself to him and I went through this process of learning our traditional music and when I came out I was very lucky I I was just you know without taking much time I became very very well known and people accepted me as a classical young sitar player and from then onward it was not looking back anymore I had a lot of opportunity uh, of performing and then came back this composing thing, you know, I wanted to create new things. So I gave film music I, for radio and tried orchestration and gradually it came to my mind and some of the Western people, diplomats, etc. in Delhi, they told me that I explain music and communicate so well, I should go to the West. Uh, because they really don't know anything about our music. And that immediately gave me the inspiration. And that's how I came, you see. And with my previous knowledge of knowing their mind, I was really able to do that. And then one thing with uh, connection with Menuhin, and then with George, and everything, you know, Performance-wise, it was wonderful. Then I took up to all these compositions, and things have happened. I've been very lucky, and thanks to friends uh, like George, it has been wonderful. George Harrison, you have continued to produce the les discs of Ravi Shankar. You have produced also the discs of Radha Krishna in London. Au fond. Vous avez l'impression de, de servir une cause à travers tout ça, et je pense même aussi au concert Bangladesh. Sure, you know, it's like. The, um, the Swami Bhaktivedanta, who started the Hare Krishna movement, he once said that he was the servant of the servant of the servant of God. So, I mean, what does that make me? I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. You know, we all have a duty. Um, I mean, that's the thing, is being able to recognize when something is a duty, you know, as well as a pleasure. You know, I mean, we could make records, I could be making records that are making more money. This isn't a record that's going to, you know, jump to number one in Billboard and, um, you know, but it's something that's good and deserves to be available for people and, you know, that once that record has been made now, 
It will be there for many, many years. And who knows, maybe in a hundred years from now, people will say, whoa, that's a nice record. Hopefully, they'll do it this year. Because, you know, I think there's a good benefit from listening to this music. Est-ce la musique qui a donné un sens à votre vie? Yeah, it's given me an occupation. <laughs> Une dernière question. Uh, comment est votre regard sur le monde aujourd'hui? You know, I, I'm unhappy about the world being concreted over and all the forests chopped down and the air polluted and the, the fact that the planet is in the control of mad people. You know, people who are crazy, people who are greedy, all these people who are selling the rainforest and, you know, any forests, just selling it because they make some money without, you know, I'm very unhappy about that, but I have a, a long-term view, which is all things must pass. I mean, before it used to be maybe they're going to blow us up with H-bombs, but even that, I thought, it don't really matter They can't destroy what's within ourselves. Krishna said, there's no time when we didn't exist and there'll be no time when we cease to exist. The only thing that changes is the body. So even if they blew us up with H-bombs, our soul will stay in our other astral body and the only thing that won't be here is physical. So, You know, I'm sad about it, um, the world, but I look at it from within and without. Like Maharishi says, you know, you live a hundred percent life outside like this, and then you meditate and you develop inside and you live 200%. percent. So I've got quite a good view of it. Thank you very much, George Harrison. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ravi Shankar. Thank you.